Welcome back to Corporate Nitro. Just having a quick look at this uh, cooling line that I bought. I bought two thicknesses, a real thin one and a real fat one. So I think we're going to go with a fat one because by the time we put something in there to join the pieces together, uh, there's not going to be much diameter left. So we ordered two pieces of uh, aluminium tubing. We ordered a real thin one and a medium one. Interestingly, they sent me a real thick one as well probably just to stop it bending in the post on the way here from China to Australia. So I got that for free, the long one, the thick one. So let's cut up some little pieces, maybe an inch long, just so we can join these together if we need to. And uh, let's round off the edges so it's not such a sharp edge. And uh, that'll make it easier to guide through the hose as well. We'll use the high-speed rotary tool to, to do the rounding of the edge. And we might use the saw just to cut it up. If you remember in the last video, we lost the 1500 milliamp battery. It swole up and we had to dispose of it, which is a shame because I had to spend $30 buying a new battery and I don't like spending money if I don't have to. Another interesting thing is that the ESC that uh, I thought I lost, I didn't actually lose it. It seems to work in every way except the little speaker in the EC, the little beeper, the buzzer, is only very faint. It's not quite loud like it used to be. But it still works. It still goes forward, still goes reverse. Uh, it does the, the correct beeps when I turn it on. So we're going to keep using this little Shark G2 uh, 40 amp ESC from ZTW. I've also got the 30 amp version at home but uh, I don't see any reason why we should stop using this one since it's still working. So I've cleaned up the little uh, nipples on the cooling outlet there so that we can uh, connect the pipes up. And uh, yeah, so I wanna focus on doing a really good job with the cooling this time, no leaks at all, not using any super glue. We're gonna use uh, some proper silicon uh, this time and uh, we've got new cooling hose ready to go as well. We can reuse some of the old one as well. I've got some different pipes ready to go and some connection nipples there, as I mentioned earlier. But uh, let's go through what changes I'm gonna make this time to prevent these issues. So I've recycled the balance lead protector and I've, I've also put some silicon all over the balance lead and the protector where they meet each other. I've put silicon on both sides of the plastic there. I've put silicon all around this tape here. I've put silicon on both sides of the positive and negative terminals and where the terminals meet the XT60 connector. I've put silicon there and on the other side of the battery I've put silicon there as well. So now, hopefully, no seawater enters this battery at all. And if it does, it should be very minimal and hopefully it doesn't cause an internal short like it did last time. So uh, how did the ESC suffer last time when we used it? Where did the seawater get into the ESC to stop it, stop the speaker working? So if this has got all silicon around here, how good is this silicon job? Do we have to put more silicon around both sides? Obviously the seawater got in somehow and it's most likely from around here. So we're gonna to have to put more silicon on there. Other than that, we're gonna to have to do something with the steering servo. I'm thinking marine grease might be the best in here because uh, I'm not going to open it up and put silicon on there. And that just leaves the receiver as well. So I've still got the original receiver. I mean, it looks terrible, but it still works. I'm just going to use the flat screwdriver now and smear this silicon all over the board. Um, we're going to go up here as well, around there. But I'm not going to put the silicon anywhere near these pins. These pins need to be exposed and uh, if a bit of water gets on the pins, 
they, they're normally okay, but uh, it's the board we want to protect. And I can't remember if I put the clear nail polish on here or not, but uh, since we've come this far, let's just smear the silicon on there and uh, hope for the best. So I'm not actually going to use the old radiator from the old ESC. I'm just going to let it sit there and just see if I can fit it in there. But if I can't, I'll just remove it. Uh, and the reason for that is because the ESC has already got its own cooling tube. And uh, I assume that's going to be enough. It doesn't mention anything about having to whack on additional radiators. Uh, it's only 40 amp. It's only a tiny little motor. Can't imagine this getting too hot. If it does burn up, I've still got the 30 amp one spare. And then I can use this radiator again. Um, so, the biggest problem is the nipples on here are tiny and all other cooling components are much larger. So this one here, for example, that goes through the motor mount, that's much larger than that little nipple there. So if we look at all the hoses that come with the boat, they're all for the large, the large pipe, the large nipples. So how are we going to get a small nipple connected to a large pipe? I'm just going to use these little plastic adapters. Let's just call them reducers, whatever they, whatever they're actually called. They're designed for indoor aquariums, and they let you connect a small hose to a large hose. So I bought these on AliExpress. Got a whole bag of them here, and uh, it only cost a few dollars. I also bought the aluminium, cut it up. I've got different sizes. And uh, I don't believe this can do anything other than join a hose of one length and one thickness. But um, with these ones, you can combine different thicknesses. So, for example, at the back of the EC here, we're going to connect the inlet hose, which is thick, going to thin using the adapter. And then when it comes out, it's thin, going to the thin hose to the adapter, to the thick hose, and then that one there is going to go to the original metal through the motor mount and then into the last bit of pipe and then out the boat, the warm water can come out there. Okay, we've just done a dry run fit to see how things will go. We've made a number of changes. So the last cooling pipe here that's a new bit of hose that we pinched from here. This is much shorter now. What we've done is we're going to put silicon all around here to stop water getting into the new ESC. We're going to put a bit of silicon underneath it as well, just so it doesn't vibrate around in there. We're going to reuse the tape. We've got the thin nitro fuel tube on the thin pipe with the adapter. The adapter will go to the thick pipe. On the other side, on the thin nipple, we've got the nitro, the thin pipe again to the adapter. We've got a short piece of thick pipe going to a little aluminium coupler that I made myself, going into the motor mount here, motor mount and cooling tube. And that goes into the new piece that we've got over here. So this is ready to go in. And uh, just a little bit of silicon work to do. Got the silicon ready. Okay, so now that we've put some silicon all over the ESC, underneath it, and wherever the cables come out of it, we've lined up the ESC plate into position. Now we can put our two screws in to hold that one down. Now that we've got the ESC plate screwed in, it's time to mount the motor. There are four screws for this one. The only thing I'll say about this step is that you want all the cables, all three, for the motor coming out between the first screw and the second screw, first and second, front and back, okay? That way they're coming out straight out. They're not gonna hit this back part of the motor that spins around. Now that we've got the four screws holding the engine in, which are one, two, three, four. Next, I'm gonna put this motor cowl on top 
and that stops all the cables rubbing against the motor which spins because it's an, it's an outrunner motor. Okay, now we've got this cowl here on. Um, we still have to do the steering servo, but uh, since I don't have the marine grease here to do the flex shaft or the steering servo, I might just focus on the receiver. We've already encapsulated the receiver in silicon and we've got a bit on the bottom. So let's position that now. I've also put a bit of silicon on the tip of the 2.4 gigahertz antenna just so the salt water doesn't corrode it any more than it has. So let's hide the antenna in the side and uh, position the receiver in the little receiver tray here so that silicon can dry overnight. And then we can hook up our last cooling hose there to the large nipple over here. Okay, besides that uh, flex shaft and steering servo, the uh, cooling system is all done. And uh, I really want to put a bit of silicon on this nose protector to stop it from falling off. And put a bit of silicon over these uh, bit here that was hit the rocks a few times. So we've got it all wired in and I've put this piece of plastic in here. Okay, and what this does is pushes these cables down. Okay, to make sure that they don't get stuck underneath here and stop the first layer canopy little levers from closing because they need to turn out these little levers here will turn out and hook in underneath here so we want all these cables pushed down and the other thing is we want all these balance leads um, we don't want this balance lead here rubbing on the coupler for the flex shaft and we don't want these cables here getting stuck on the back of the motor the front of the motor or the coupler so by putting this piece of plastic here, we're keeping all these cables on top of everything. They just can't fall down there. And then the final steps are just to smear some silicon across the top of the motor mount cooling thing. And then also put a big blob of silicon on your receiver wires. You do not want water following the cables going straight into your receiver. We did put silicon inside the receiver, but this stops the water following the cables to get in there in the first place. The cover is not sealed. The water can still get in there, but there would have to be a lot of seawater in the boat to get into those cracks. Any amount of seawater in the boat normally just follows the cables. That's why it's really important to think about what your cables are leading up to and just putting some silicon there. Eight o'clock in the morning and there's nobody here yet. So we're just gonna use the uh, silicon spray and we're gonna spray the balance lead. And All right, so we've just been playing with the trim, steering trim a little bit. Uh, the boat is going to the right. We put a lot of steering trim onto the left. Uh, I think that's usual because the, the rudder is on the right side of the boat so you always have to trim it a bit to the left. Uh, it's hard to know this when you're setting it up. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to move the uh, servo horn, steering servo horn a little bit to the next notch. Probably not, it's probably not that dramatic but uh, it's definitely noticeable. As long as you've got some steering trim to play with on the TX it's fine but uh, if it's too much then yeah by all means move the horn a little bit all right let's give it a go so we're checking now if there's cooling if we've got cooling water coming out the side can't see anything yet no nah, i've got no cooling at all which is a shame. Nothing at all, no cooling at all. Does it need more speed? I've got a lot of weeds on the back too. Alright, I'll take the camera away, fix up the weeds and see if I can fix this cooling issue. 
All right, we've got a couple of problems. The flex shaft has fallen out and we've lost drive to the boat. And also there must be a kink in the cooling system because we can't see any water flowing out of the boat. Let's take the boat back to the workshop, see if we can fix these two issues. A bit of bad news to report. The ESC is not powering on. It's not beeping. It's not sending any power to the motor at all. It's still sending five volts to the receiver. We can get the receiver to come on. We can get channel two and three steering and throttle to work. UART throttle loss, SC protection, throttle not protected, LVC.